Hello guys, Robin here, and today I'm gonna talk to you about violence, or more specifically and perhaps more interestingly, non-violence. So, welcome to Victorville. Now, Ro, in your last video, first of all, uh, I couldn't... I couldn't go to a new place and record it this week, so, so I'll do it for next video. I uh, actually have some plans and it will be quite good, I, I can assure you that. And so in your last video you also talked about uh, what we should do in case of nuclear disasters or to prevent them. It got me thinking about war in general because it's been an integral part of human life since the beginning. And the thing is, violence is something that is very very common amongst all kinds of animals. And so, uh, it, this, this has led a lot of people to think that uh, we will never live in a place, in a world of peace, simply because uh, it's part of our nature to be violent. And, well, they, they're right in, in that violence might be part of human nature. However, it doesn't have to be that way. And I have a few examples that I want to share with you. Let's first look at one of our closest relatives, the bonobos. This is a kind of primates, very very closely related to the chimps. They probably diverged from one another less than 2 million years ago and they are extremely different from each other. Uh, chimpanzees are much more violent uh, whereas bonobos rarely have any sort of violence between themselves. They do show aggression towards other animals, it has been shown and sometimes even within the groups but it's very rare. Most of their society is very peaceful and that allows them to, to have stronger bonds and just uh, share and have bigger groups that can help each other. We're not exactly sure why this is, it could be just because it presents them a lot more advantages in fighting which is with each other. That's why they evolved to not be very violent. In any case, this is a good example of how even if something has been ingrained in our nature for millions and millions of years, it can disappear. Uh, maybe not completely, but it can be reduced. But more importantly, humans have other tools right? other than just uh, genetic mutations and going through time and evolving to, to do whatever uh, makes us better. We have the ability to think and to get over problems. Before we are born, one of the things that distinguishes humans from other animals is the size of our brain. And the size of our brain also makes it harder for humans to give birth, which causes humans to have to, have to give birth before the, the, well, the baby's brain is fully developed, which causes that there are not a lot of instincts that humans have such as uh, other animals that are born knowing how to walk or how to communicate with other animals, how to feed, how to hunt. We have to be taught most things uh, through culture, through looking at what's around us, through education. That education can lead us to many things. Because I think many kinds of education right now are focused on reducing violence because they see it as something that is not good, which I think is it's important to look at it like that. However, uh, there are still many, many cultures where violence is even encouraged, mostly amongst men, just to prove superiority or strength. And in some cultures, it's also show, shown as something positive that you should engage in to protect your country or whatever you believe in, which I disagree on, by the way. Uh, but there are still some cultures that from the beginning have, haven't encouraged these kind of behaviors. And that's the main thing that I want to talk about. Uh, there's this culture that live in the Malay Peninsula uh, called the Semai people. And a very, very interesting trait of this community is that they hold no violence. And when they have a problem, they solve it uh, with talking to each other uh, through these communal discussions uh, where people just get together and uh, convince the people who are being trialed to not do whatever they did again because it, it's bad for the community. And even children are taught, apparently, to, to fear their own instincts of aggressiveness. So this culture sees violence as something bad that shouldn't be necessary. And I'm not sure if this concept can actually be uh, applied to the whole world because of the world is a very, very complex system with many things that may or may not require violence. I don't think there are very, very few scenarios where violence should be absolutely necessary when it's life or death. But still, the Samai people are a very, very good example because it shows us that there are societies that can work and live for thousands of years without having violence, which is assumed to be something very important for humans. Of course, this 
their economy is also very different from what we're used to. They have a gift economy where they share everything and they just give it, give things to each other uh, because they they know that if they do that, they will also receive what they need and their community will, will be prosper. And that doesn't really work in many places because of how culture works. And it would probably be very, very, very complicated to, uh, to use this at a larger scale. However, just the basic idea of not having violence is something worth exploring, simply because it eliminates the, the argument that we cannot stop being violent. I think if, we mo if more of us took this position of stopping violence, the world could be a more peaceful, peaceful place. And there are many ways in which one can get rid of whatever aggressive feelings one might feel without actually engaging in violence. So guys, for your next video, I want you to tell me ways in which you think you can also employ this violent, aggressive energy, if there is any, without using violence directly. Uh, so I'll see you when I see you.